Hello everyone. My name is Lauda Veika. I'm a Linux kernel developer. And today I will talk about SSDFS. Uh, mostly I would like to discuss my upstreaming plans, but also uh, Javier mentioned today that we cannot wait 10 years. Yeah, it started, for example, 10 years ago, but the problem is that life is not straightforward. You not always can focus, be fully focused on full system and so on. Uh, so uh, my plan for today talk uh, discuss upstreaming efforts, but first of all, I need to refresh what is SSDFS, because not everybody could know about SSDFS. And also, for example, I need to share current status, current issues. And for example, I have for today micro benchmarking results because uh, I had some like, questions about what about performance. So this is something like a plan for today. And briefly, I simply uh, refresh uh, what SSD, SSDFS, what's the point of SSDFS. First of all, uh, SSDFS doesn't require classical garbage collection. And for example, it's a really good point because uh, the main technique of SSDFS is migration scheme, but not garbage collector. Of course, SSDFS has garbage collector, but it's mostly something like hints for main threads uh, from garbage collector subsystem. They trust simply try to uh, help to main threads to manage uh, the something like workload from application. So the main point is something like SSDFS can prolong SSD lifetime. SSDFS can uh, decrease write amplification. Of course, there are many uh, like definition what is write amplification. Uh, and of course, SSDFS, because using compression, compaction scheme, it can uh, store something like more data than something like physical space of erase block, for example. So this is the main points of uh, SSDFS. And uh, architecture is pretty straightforward. So it's based on segment concept. Uh, every segment could contain one or several erase blocks. Uh, initially, erase blocks, something like logical one. It's not mapped in any physical space on the volume. And there is special mapping table that provides a way to map uh, logical erase block into physical one. And finally, every erase block contains uh, some sequence of logs. Every log contains header, some metadata, it's some like block bitmap, a set table, and, and payload. And finally, uh, there are several types of segments and several types of uh, erase blocks because erase blocks are uh, tightly related to segment. And uh, of course, SSD has, has uh, some metadata, first of all, super block, then a mapping table that map logical race block into physical one, uh, then it's segment bitmap that, for example, initially uh, was uh, designated for garbage collector and for location because segment bitmap writes the way to uh, see what's the state of segment. And the rest, it's B3s, it's I know it's B3, the entries B3, extends B3, extended attributes B3s. It's possible to add additional metadata in the form of B3. And everything is work on the uh, like erase uh, block concept. Uh, and for every type of metadata and for, uh, for every type of metadata, uh, there is special type of segment. Uh, potentially, it's possible to or something like dedicate several type of segment for user data, but currently it's not. Uh, it doesn't work because uh, I don't see currently the point for this, but it's possible. So uh, what is the current status uh, in the recently implemented and stabilized features? First of all, uh, I switched the whole code for uh, on folio support because uh, it was a request. Uh, and for finally, uh, it solved problem with uh, supporting 8 kilobytes, 16 kilobytes, 32 kilobytes logical block in SSDFS. Uh, also, uh, I did something like uh, implementation of supporting compression for offset translation table and storing offset translation table in every log because I try to decrease uh, like amount of read I request. Uh, something like I implemented erase block inflation model to store more data in erase block, but currently it's not in the repository because it's not stable. Uh, implemented uh, deduplication on the erase block basis. Uh, fixed set of superblock segments, uh, recover FS tool, 
and snapshot rules. I will explain in the next slides uh, what what here. So uh, folio support, uh, it's implemented, it's tested, uh, it works pretty uh, in predictable way. 8K, 16K, 32K works. Uh, maybe I have some small worries because, for example, even, uh, for example, you can try to locate folio. So anyway, uh, it, it no guarantees that we'll always uh, like receive 16K folio or 32K folio in the case of fragmentation and file system needs to be ready to manage this situation. Also, for example, uh, read ahead logic doesn't take into account logical block size and you potentially could something like have allocated uh, folio bigger than logical block. From my point of view, it's pretty big trouble. I found some work around, but it's some worry for, for me, for example. Um, sorry? So, okay. Go ahead. No. If you go back a slide, okay. the answer to that question is no. no. If the block size is a block size, the block size is the block size. And um, you cannot cope with any, anything smaller than the block size. That's kind of the idea of block size. So I received so, uh, during my testing logical folio bigger than my logical block size. You do have, of course, the problem that you will run into memory fragmentation if you switch to larger, larger block sizes. Yes, that will happen. But this is not something which should be solved on the block layer and thereby, well, whatever, but rather should be solved where it occurs, namely where the memory fragmentation occurs. So the idea here is that um, if you switch to the large block size, your entire VMA will be running on that large block size, meaning you can only allocate from that VMA with these large blocks. That will reduce the memory pressure there, because there you won't have fragmentation on that VMA, because everything is allocated in that block size. And the memory fragmentation on the VMM itself, sure, will occur, but we need to deal with that somehow, but not at the file system level. You really should not be, uh, you should not try to fix it at the level because really that wasn't the intention of it, and that really won't occur once you once you switch to large block sizes. No, I see my point is simple. So uh, I'm using lar large folio, for example, and uh, my logical block 16k, and potentially I can receive from read the head logic that uh, folio will be 32k. Yes, of course. So but then I it will be split into smaller ones. Yeah, sure. That might happen. So I would like not to receive 32K. I would like to receive 16K or smaller one. That's all what I would like to have. Not smaller. 16K, yes. If the block is 16K, you will receive, uh, you will receive uh, something in increments of 16K. You might always get larger ones, but these trivially can be broken up with smaller bits and pieces on your side. I mean, if you have a large I.O. coming in, no one's forcing you to store this large I.O. in one go, you can as well break it up on the block layer and just store it on your file system to do something else there. No one's forcing you to, to store large, a large I.O.s, is it? So here, yeah, my point is simple, not bigger than logical work size, that's all. Okay, so let's go ahead. Thank you. So uh, when I try to estimate uh, how many read I.O. SSDFS is generated, uh, initially, I implemented a uh, logic when offset uh, stable stored in something like in distributed model uh, because, for example, the whole offset uh, trans table was split on something like uh, in multiple logs. And finally, uh, it was something like if I would like to build offset trans transition table for some race block, so I needed to read multiple logs. This is something like uh, this was not good from my point of view. I simply implemented logic when I can store uh, setters table in every log and use compression. And then I try to estimate is it work or not. So for smaller is blocks, something like 128K, 256K, uh, it's mostly uh, not big deal. It's not uh, provide something uh, interesting, but for bigger race blocks, uh, it makes uh, sense because in this case uh, it can decrease uh, amount of read requests three times, for example. And uh, my conclusion is that, for example, if it's something like cold data, potentially it can be used a distributed model or if it's something like smaller is block, 128, 256K. So finally, distributed model uh, could work too. 
But if it's something like multiple updates, it's hot data, so in this case, uh, storing of set table in the relog makes sense because in this case, uh, read IO path will be faster. So this is something like conclusion. And uh, finally, uh, after using uh, compression and compaction, I realized that, for example, uh, for the case of cold data, for example, if uh, data is not updated, so finally, a race block could be uh, not filled uh, completely because finally, uh, when I'm trying to locate, I try not to locate uh, more than uh, physical space. And finally, if, for example, I'm trying to store 100K file, uh, and finally, I can allocate something like a 4K logical box size. So finally, I can allocate something like 25 uh, logical blocks in this race block of, for example, 128 kilobyte. So and finally, I cannot allocate more. And finally, I store data in compact form, for example, 2AK at whole, but the rest of race blocks cannot be used for storing new data. So and I implemented inflation model when I can store more data in a race block that uh, something like physical uh, number of uh, logical blocks in this race block, and I estimated uh, something like for different ratio compression uh, in every uh, logical block. It look, looks good. Uh, so race block simulation model can store uh, significant amount of data in physical uh, race block, uh, but currently it's not fully stable. And uh, also it needs to mention that uh, race block doesn't mean that it's uh, not uh, about the whole volume because it's slightly more tricky for SSDFS. Also, the duplication for uh, race block uh, was uh, implemented. Initially, I is, has intention, have intention to uh, implement file-based deduplication. It's not completely finished, but uh, currently uh, race block-based deduplication it should work. Uh, how it's efficient, it's uh, hard to say because, first of all, uh, if you're talking about the NS SSD, so usually a zone can be huge. So in this case, for example, if a lot, a lot of replicated data, so it can work, but I didn't do some uh, estimation of this. And also something like uh, interesting uh, tool, it's recovery first tool uh, that's available or SSDFS. The point here is that in every log, SSDFS keep for every piece of data uh, information about a node ID, about logical offset and set of file, uh, and of course, something like size of piece of data. And finally, uh, this tool simply can pass through the whole, uh, the whole volume. It can pass through uh, REST blocks and uh, check every log. And finally, uh, files can be uh, rebuilt can be recovered. For example, it's a possible case when FS, uh, FSCK cannot recover uh, the volume. And uh, finally, uh, this tool can, for example, let's imagine that all metadata is gone. For example, mapping table gone, the segment bitmap gone, I note uh, three, uh, we haven't I notes three, then three strings so on. So in this case, uh, SSDFS provides opportunity to uh, recover uh, files from the volume because every log contains a node ID, logical offset and center files. And this operation looks like a copy operation from uh, corrupted volume in any other volume. Uh, and finally, every file will have something like a node ID as name. And if, for example, uh, the entries are uh, survived, potentially it's possible to try to uh, recover uh, names of file too. But from my point of view, it's pretty uh, interesting feature that SSDFS provides. And finally, uh, because uh, recovery first can take uh, time stamp and can recover the state of file for some time point. So finally, uh, I added snapshot rules. Uh, and with, uh, because, for example, uh, snapshot rules provide the way to uh, create snapshots automatically and expire. And snapshots can expire also automatically because in uh, SSDFS snapshot is simply time stamp nothing more because all other data, uh, all, for example, uh, all other metadata are stored in every log because headers uh, contains uh, timestamp of creation of, uh, of the log. And this is something like, I think, uh, interesting uh, feature. This can work, these two features can work together. So yeah, I yeah, yeah, just uh, uh, where we, we probably need to reload with some coffee before this, <laughs> the second half. So uh, about five more minutes, so we can wrap up. 
Okay. But not, five yeah, minutes. Yeah. Okay, so finally, uh, I did uh, micro benchmarking because uh, I had request what about performance, uh, and finally I used uh, the same uh, device, the same SSD, and I uh, try to estimate something like uh, how SSD FSBK is for create read, update, and delete operation. Uh, it can be SSDFS faster, uh, something like not faster, and so on. And uh, finally, I did these estimations. First of all, I tried to create several uh, size uh, files with uh, different sizes. It was 16K, 100K, 1 megabyte, uh, uh, one megabyte, and I created different number of files. It was 10, 100, uh, 1,000, and I tried to estimate, for example, duration, numbers I request, uh, and finally try to estimate performance. And I compared with X4, XFS, uh, BTRFS, BCacheFS, F2FS, and so on. And if all systems support compression, I enable compression for BCacheFS, BTRFS, and F2FS. And finally, uh, I can see that, for example, SSDFS looks pretty good for uh, create operation, for read operations. Uh, it also looks uh, not bad. Uh, and mostly, I can uh, like conclude that, for example, bigger RS block size could be better, but uh, maybe not huge RS block size because uh, it could be not so good. And for example, I think um, bigger logical block size could work also uh, better. So, and finally, update operation. In this case, SSDFS looks good. And uh, delete operation. So, for delete operation, it also uh, looks good from my point of view. So, finally, uh, some conclusion about micro-benchmarking that uh, SSDFS looks uh, good for uh, something like uh, data with a good compression ratio. So I need to estimate uh, if, for example, it's not a good compression ratio, so maybe it will be not so good, but anyway, as minimum for some, uh, for if data can be compressed, finally SSDFS can, can work better. And I think this is my main point. So SSDFS can prolong SSD lifetime, can decrease the amplification and performance uh, not so bad. And finally, it uh, doesn't require classical, classical garbage collection. So, and finally, uh, mostly the most critical features that I need to stabilize, it's a race block inflation model, uh, shared dictionary, because currently if you're trying to create or store file uh, with a name that uh, longer than 16, uh, 13 uh, symbols, so usually it needs to share a dictionary, but shared dictionary is not stable, and it, uh, this could fail. Uh, and this is the main worry for me right now. So I would like to stabilize uh, these two features. The NS support uh, mostly depends on inflation model. So this is something like uh, the main plan, uh, make this stabilization and share patch set. So and, uh, it, it will be good to have something like help with uh, code review, with uh, maybe testing, bug fix also. So this is something like uh, the, main, the main request uh, and the current status. If I will have something like some support, some help from the community, it will be not 10 years, next years. <laughs> it's the main worry, so it's the main problem that I need some help. Uh, but I believe SSDFS is pretty good. It's my, my belief. So. Yeah. I think planned feature is not so important, and I can see how FDP can be used for SSDFS. So uh, this is the main point. May I have some support, some help? Yeah. So any questions before the break? Take it before we take the break, I think we have room for one question. If I, I have a lot of questions, but I think I need to discuss some things, and maybe we can uh, look okay. back to it in the in the buff session. Um, but I think it's time for some coffee and cake. <laughs> and we can reconvene here in, in 20 minutes around 5. Uh, if you're 5 minutes late starting that, that's fine. But try to come, be back in time. Anyway, I'm here. You can ask questions anytime. Thanks, Slava. <laughs>